Mm-hmm. Happy New Year. Happy yeah. New Year. <laughs> God, I hope this year is better than the everyone last. Well, well, it's not going to be off to a great start because uh, I have some bad news. The first podcast of the year is going to be me and Zero gushing over Final Fantasy XIV for three hours. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I, I just remembered I have somewhere else I need to yeah. be. Right, man, I, gotta... <laughs> I mean, it's probably not a problem. i got to be somewhere for two hours, so I'll be back. Uh... No, I, I joke, but honestly, it's nice to hear you guys be excited about something. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, they had the, the JP Fan Fest. Yeah, they did. But we, we can save that. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Uh, oh, boy. <clears throat> so, yeah, Happy New Year. Yay. First podcast of the year. Woo. Woo. Hell, yeah. Mm-hmm. Bit of a break because you know we record on Sundays and um, that was Christmas Eve and then New Year's Eve, <laughs> so you know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, but, a lot uh, happened. Yeah, that was Christmas. Oh, um, it was pretty good for uh, over uh, on my part. We we're gonna have uh, we we had family over and. Uh, Got everybody together. I got a bunch of uh, good presents I wasn't expecting. <clears throat> from uh, my my brother got me this. It's like it looks almost like a like a Game Boy, but it's got like a high quality screen and it's an emulator. Mm, um, nice with like, good. yeah, it has like L and R buttons on the back, um, and it has it's filled with ROMs. It's an emulator that has. Um, Pretty much almost every single uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, PlayStation 1, uh, Genesis, Sega CD oh, game wow. that I've ever played or wanted to play on it. PlayStation like, is an interesting one because those start to get big. Yeah. <clears throat> it's crazy, right? All the stuff I played when I was a kid, my brother, he went and he handpicked all those games and loaded it up on it. I was like, this is really good. Mm, that's a cool present. I could ne- that yeah. is really cool. And now I can play like um I never I never played Pokemon Crystal. So I can go and actually play mm. that game now for the first yeah, time. That's a serious missed That was <laughs> that was a great one. Great one. Yeah. I can't, uh, I can't remember whether it was me or my sister that had Crystal. One of us had silver and one had crystal. Which is unfortunate because we didn't have the twin versions. But, uh... Yeah, no, me and my brother are always, like, gold and silver, red and, like, um, ruby, sapphire. We always split the games. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one. Yeah. But, you know, got a bunch of games and stuff. New new clothes, <clears throat> new jackets that are nice. Yeah. Anything interesting happen for the rest of y'all? I had some nice presents. My sister pre-ordered Princess Peach Showtime for me, so that's nice. Oh, that's great of her. Nice. Yeah. I had I... Um, Christmas tacos, so that was nice. <laughs> Didn't really do anything like festive or fancy. It was just, just another day, basically, to spend the time with family. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Me and my tacos. dad made a. Me and my dad made our Christmas lasagna. Nice. My mother made French toast casserole. I don't think I've ever had that. That sounds interesting. Mm. It was a family tradition for decades that we would always have French toast on Christmas Eve. Mm. Now that now that my father has more dietary restrictions, we've had to get a bit more creative about it. Mm. That makes sense. I've been there. Mm. Uh, my Christmas was fantastic. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so I've, I've, I've talked about it on here before. I've talked about it on the discord and stuff. Uh, my stepdad has, is, is in very poor health. He is, he's not doing great. Mm. Uh, his lungs are basically shot. Uh, he Ooh. is now on oxygen. So he basically mm. can't leave the house. Um, <clears throat> And for the past two Christmases, uh, it has been not 
great because I go around my parents' house and we have Christmas dinner. I've been doing it since I moved out. I just go around on Christmas Day and we do presents together and have Christmas dinner. And for the past two years, uh, my stepdad has managed to sit at the dining table for approximately three minutes before he starts getting incredibly nauseous and has to go back into the living room to lie down. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, not, 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 not been great for anyone, really. Uh, that and that's not his fault. I'm not putting this on him or anything. It's just a really, yeah. Of it's a really rough time for everybody. Um, uh, but this year, uh, one of his daughters, uh, my stepsister, uh, middle one. Uh, got him some <clears throat> some gummies that have a substance in them uh, that is uh, quite good for nausea, uh, oh. among other things, but also nausea in particular. Uh, also makes him a little bit more cheerful and upbeat, <laughs> a little, little giggly perhaps, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> Yeah. I wasn't aware that mystery substance helped with nausea. That's pretty cool. It, it does. It has quite a few med- medical properties that, uh, you know, are basically the reason people want it to be legalized. Uh, mm. <laughs> I mean, not that it... Shit. <laughs> <laughs> not that it's illegal or anything. Yeah, no, that's, that's crazy. Anyway, I don't actually know anymore because it's such a nebulous subject. Um, uh, I don't think it's illegal to have. <laughs> I think that's where it stands right now in this country. Um, ah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah between recreational and medical use, it's kind of a toss up here. Yeah, um, but yeah, they they really helped. He he was a, he was upbeat. He was in a really good mood. He was doing very well, and we all managed to sit down for Christmas dinner. My grandma was there. Uh, my uncle on stepdad's side was there. Uh, had a nice meal together, and it's the first time we've been able to do it in three years. It was just, it was Aww. so fantastic. I, I was just over the moon, just being Ooh. able to do that and have a proper Christmas dinner for the first time in a while. So, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, in in less, uh, I can't think of a more appropriate word. And that's not because it's an appropriate word. I just can't think of a better one. Uh, unless uh, portentous uh, <laughs> uh, news. Uh, I did get a very nice Christmas, Christmas present from my mom. Uh, I basically told her, hey, uh, I have no idea what you could get me for Christmas. Um, how about a Pokemon plush? I literally just threw it out there. And she said, okay, uh, I don't... Rem- I Those were a thing when you were a kid. I don't really remember a lot of stuff about it. I'm like... That's okay. Surprise me. Because, you know, Yeah, yeah that's a good just, answer. Just fucking go for it, and we'll see what comes out. And if it's goofy and I hate it, then I'll still love it. It's going to be great. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, good me. And what she ended up getting me was a Mega Charizard X. Oh. The black and blue one. <laughs> Yeah! It is standing guard over my desk right now. It, it fucking rocks. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. I've got well like two Pokemon plushes right now, and one's just a shiny Umbreon and a Nido King. Hmm. My, two of my faves. My sister in law made me a Pokemon plushie for Christmas. Oh, oh that's, that's cool. great. <laughs> that is really cool. Yeah. Hold on, let me see if I have a picture. Yeah, so Christmas time, good time. Uh, New Year, I don't even fucking pay attention to New Year. (laughs) Perfectly honest with you. I know it was raining, so I didn't go out and watch the fireworks because it was raining. Like, I don't know Mm, how they set off fireworks with it raining, but, you know, whatever. Uh, So, yeah, I... I'm working through the backlog of games that I have um, acquired through through Christmas because I, I often have the problem of I get a ton of stuff 
like games that are like, oh, I'll just put this in, you know, I'll put some stuff on my Steam wish list or I'll put like stuff, um, you know, I'll, my mom asks for a, a list of like stuff and I always ask for just a few games. Uh, my Steam wish list, wish list this year emptied uh, because people just bought me presents and <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I, I'm working through stuff. <laughs> Because <laughs> um, I have one person who has, uh, I have a friend who has a, a Nino Kuni agenda and is buying everybody Nino Kuni. Oh, that um, is cool. So I, I don't know what that is. What's, what's that? Uh, Nino Kuni. It's a no, uh, uh, picture in chat. Sorry, Zero. We didn't mention. No. Okay. Oh. Yeah, Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch is a uh, RPG, very um very beautiful art style. Um came out a while ago, but the the sequel came out recently and they've been really into that series. I see. And yeah, uh, I haven't played it yet <laughs> cuz I uh um <clears throat> working through a few other games. Uh before I, uh before that though, uh I just want to say I went and I saw a movie what, I saw the movie? the movie Wonka. Oh, uh, yeah, that thing. That was it. So, w- Wonka <laughs> is a movie right. that I felt was very poorly advertised. Because before watching it, I had absolutely no interest in it whatsoever. Because it looked like a kind of a cheap cash grab of a prequel to the Willy Wonka story of Wonka as a young man. Mm. Um, you know completely like it, it felt like they were milking the franchise the, the quote unquote franchise here right is that not what it is it's a musical oh and it's a well done musical well now um <laughs> like the characters that they pick all make sense there's um it's it's a good it's a good story uh wonka himself is he spent his entire life dedicating himself to chocolate, so he doesn't even know how to read. Wow. <laughs> you know? So that's a, a challenge he has to overcome and has to <clears throat> learn how to read because he has re-entered society after traveling around the world researching chocolate. You'd think that'd be step one of chocolate yeah. learning. Is... It, it, I mean, recipe explain... is usually written down, but... You know, okay. He explains that up until this point, he's relied on the kindness of stranger when, strangers when it comes to reading. Um... Yeah. Hmm. But, I don't know if I really believe that, but okay, <laughs> sure, why not? But when he returns um, to, you know, when he when he goes to the chocolate making capital, uh, he quickly finds that being the the smaller up and coming business, he everybody's trying to squash him down, and like he's very naive and doesn't know things about people and gets suckered into a like a horrible um, debt, like an endless debt. And has to be forced to work at like a, a like a laundry place Ugh. to work it off. And so, you know, the, the then the solution there is, well, okay, if I can sneak out of this place that they basically are keeping me prisoner and sell chocolate, I can earn enough money to essentially buy out the debts of me and the other people here. And so it's it, it tells a good story. I actually really liked it. Hmm. I got surprised by how much I liked it. Probably because I went in with like rock bottom expectations, but I like help. musicals. You know, I'm a musical theater guy. I like musicals. The songs are well picked. The characters work together, and um, it it actually works cohesively with the original story. You you say well picked? Is it a jukebox musical or is it? Uh... <laughs> I know, no, no. It's I say well picked as in <clears throat> that's just a, me jumbling over my words. It's oh, well written. Okay. The the uh, the the songs work well, and I actually liked them, and they were sung well. Like everybody did a great performance, and I I didn't really get that. Like when I had seen the trailers, that it was you know that it had quality to it. So I was very surprised by it. Yeah, the only uh, advertising I ever saw was immediately mocked and ridiculed for, like, why the fuck does this exist? So, I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. they were going to get that reaction regardless of actual quality. Mm-hmm. 
Like it. Yeah. It, so it, I, I never heard cool. anything about how good it was. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The. Uh, the director uh, is uh, Paul King, who directed the Paddington movies. Okay. Okay. Um, apparently, those are very good, and so uh, just did a very good job with this. So I recommend. Uh, I don't know if it's still in theaters, but if it is, uh, go check it out. Mm. If you like musicals. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, back to back to games. Uh, I got Fate Samurai Remnant, and I yes. beat it. Yes. Uh, for anybody who's a fan of the <clears throat> Fate franchise, Fate Samurai Remnant takes place. Um, I think was it six either six was it sixteen fifteen or sixteen fifty one? Um, I don't know. Uh, but it is about a sort of pseudo Holy Grail war called the Waxing Moon Ritual. Okay. And sure. y- you play as the main, and, and your main character here is Miyamoto Iori, the sole disciple of Miyamoto Musashi. And uh, it's made by the, what were the developers again? It was, it's like the, yeah, oh, um, Omega Force. It, it's kind of like, uh, it's the Muso guys. Yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of like a Muso, but it's, it's. The way it works is you have Miyamoto Iori and his servant, who is Saber, whose name and identity I won't really spoil here. Um, but they're black-haired Saber face. Uh, <clears throat> their gender is question mark. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, and you are in uh, a Grail War with seven masters, seven servants, and then eight rogue servants that are not really tied to anybody. Um, that are just kind of summoned as part of this kind of imperfect ritual and who you can get to kind of side with you so you can uh, play as Iori, partner with a servant and then a rogue servant once you form a connection with them. And the way it works is uh, Iori, being a swordsman, uh, has different stances that he goes through, like the earth stance, which is gives you like super armor and you can do uh, attacks that are much slower, but much more powerful. And then the water stance, which is very fast, very fluid, good for taking out groups of enemies at a time. And uh, play through the story, and it's it's really good. I actually had a lot of fun with it. Just uh, There's like a meter you build up that you can switch uh, over to playing as a servant, which is immediately far, far more powerful than Eeyore yeah, because he's yeah. just a guy. That would make sense. <laughs> but... Um, as you progress through the game, he sharpens up his swordsmanship, trying to pursue Musashi's, um, you know, sword techniques because his his master died before the full secrets of the teaching could be tra- passed down to him. And then he entered into a time of peace uh, in Japan, so not a lot of opportunities to polish off his uh, sword play. Yay, war! How convenient. So by the end of it, when you have all the stances, um. You, you're playing as an incredibly fun and powerful character that can just annihilate things. It's really, really fun. Hmm. And then you have the the various boss battles with servants, and you know, unlocking, uh, getting to use the noble phantasm bars and everything. But it doesn't play like a traditional uh, Muso in that, like you know, you're grabbing bases and all that. There is. Uh, when it comes to Grail War stuff, they actually steal from FGO quite a bit with the uh, the, the Grail. If you've done FGO, um, the Grail Front stuff, they have uh, the Spirit Front. Mm. Where, where you're moving strategically across a bunch of nodes and, and grabbing bonuses so that you can uh, do battles with powerful enemies and such. But uh, I really liked it. It's a really fun game. Mm. Um it has multiple endings. Uh, you can only get the true ending on New Game Plus, but when you do New Game Plus, it starts you off on Chapter 2. Um, and there's only like five chapters in the game, so already a, a ways into it, and you have the option to skip already read text, so it's actually not that bad to go through on New Game Plus. Nice. That is appreciated. I, I, I like that quality of life stuff. 
they also add um, new uh, bosses uh, throughout, like new very difficult encounters throughout the entirety of the world and every map there is, every town and everything. So you can go do that for extra challenge. Uh, I accidentally went onto the hardest difficulty on New Game Plus, which meant I couldn't use items in battle, and then I just got annihilated, and was like, I have to go back down. <laughs> I like being able to heal, please. Thank you. Um, yeah, they have a repost system, which, like, with perfect dodging, um, the Earth uh, stance actually has a perfect parry uh, mechanic to it as well. Uh, fire stance you deal you, you deal a ton of damage and move really fast when you're at low hp we're getting a little bit into the weeds here yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry um but it's a really it's really fun and i i it got me like hyper fixated on fate again because i was like i like this series i like mm. this a lot yeah there, there are parts to this that aren't the mobile game that is incredibly grindy <laughs> Yeah, when it's yeah. not trying to steal my money constantly. Yeah, yeah. Also, Gilgamesh is a ruler um, in in Samurai Revenant, and he runs the shop. <laughs> wow. And you can make lots of money by selling him wooden statues of himself that you carve. Incredible. <laughs> you you walk up and he's he's bragging to children and and handing out candy shaped like him to them. That's so much effort. <laughs> he carves a lollipop that's like his upper torso with him laughing as his arms crossed, bare chested. No effort <laughs> is too much effort for teaching the children the greatness of Gilgamesh, okay? There is no effort that can be spared for this uh, enterprise. That's the word. That's fair enough. So yeah, they they bring back um they they, they you can uh, there's side stories as well where you can play as the other masters and like their servants and uh, you can refight any boss in the game as any servant. So like if there's a character you really like, uh, you can do that. Uh, if you're a fan of FGO or any of the story stuff in there, I think you'll like this. There's a lot of stuff in there for people who know a lot of the wider range of servants, I guess. Um. Yeah, I don't want to spoil it, but this this there's one thing I really want to talk about about one servant uh, to you, especially Casey. But I, I think I'll hold off on that. Okay. Um. But yeah, that was a really good game. And then I started playing Fate Extra CCC because I got inspired by Samurai Remnant. Quite understandable. Because they and they announced that the saber from Famurai, uh, the, from the Famurai <laughs> Samurai Revenant is coming from, to FGO on New Year's and, and JP. Yeah, so that's like two years away for us. So hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh gosh, what was I going to say? Uh, but I want to talk about Pokemon right now because I beat the Indigo Disc. And um, I have yeah. not, oddly enough. Okay, so, so, so we avoid spoilers. Yeah. Okay, avoiding spoilers as much as possible. Um, I decided to kind of grit my teeth and go through the poor performance of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet to do the Teal Mask and the Indigo Disc DLCs. And I really, really like the story that the two DLCs tell. It's very character centric. It's very well done, and the combat, like the battles in Indigo Disc, are actually really well designed. Like it's all double battles in that DLC. I've uh, played enough into it. You don't normally see even. You don't normally see NPCs with strategies this complex with. Teams this varied and holding competitive items at that. Yes, I have fought multiple random trainers out in the wild in this DLC area that have focus sashed Pokemon. Or life orbed Pokemon. Or life orbed Pokemon. Like every battle, there's strats that are actually on display. 
I feel uh, like the, the Pokemon company has seemed to have played the Dreon OX like we did. And we're like, oh, okay. Let's try and incorporate some of this. Like, this isn't that bad. Kids could figure this out. Maybe we don't need to baby them completely. Yeah, uh, all the battles, like, there's, I think the, the last trainer battle um, of the main story of the DLC has Pokemon as high as level 85. Okay. Um, with extra, uh, uh, with af- after you beat the DLC, you'll unlock refights with every single significant trainer in the game, where they have much more difficult teams. Um, and it's a lot of fun. Like I, I, I actually had to really think about what I was doing in these battles because I'm having pokemon suddenly do things like set up screens and use weather to their advantage and um use items and like pose an actual strategic threat is really refreshing same here i mean i've only beaten one of the blueberry academy elite four so far but i had to build a snow focused team to to stand a chance against his his powerhouse dragons. I got wiped by him three times in a row, and I was. They, they've stepped it up, and I know I know that Drayton is the strongest of the elite four, and I started with the hardest one, but still. Yeah, it's it's great. I the performance still sucks like don't get me wrong it's still moving through the areas feels like you're moving through molasses at times Mm -hmm. but the story the writing the music uh the indigo disc is set in a gen 5 area it's technically part of unova so they have remixes of gen 5 themes in there like the trainer theme the wild pokemon theme are all remixed in the dlc and uh remastered and everything and it sounds great um and I've seen, like, I, I've been watching videos of people who get to the, the champion in uh, of Blueberry Academy in the DLC and being like, oh, <laughs> they're actually, they're, they're cooking. Like, they're using, like, VGC strats here. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're actually taking notice, and uh, it's great honestly um gave me a lot of hope for at least the battles being more interesting going forward in this series hmm. so yeah Good. it does bear promise mm-hmm. the, the main reason that i haven't beaten the story yet is that i've been focused on filling up the pokedex which has mean do, which has meant doing a lot of barbecues. <laughs> yeah. Why, why did they have to do that? Why? I mean, so I blueberry mean... quests or BBQs? Oh, I see. Are quests that you can like minor quests that you can fulfill relatively quickly as you're exploring through the terrarium, which is this new area of four different biomes. And uh, as you do these, you get points, which you can then use to um, upgrade your um, your abilities and stuff you have at the league room. Um, you can change, for example, your throwing style. I went with the smug throwing style because I find that hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um and you can uh, use that as well to use this um, item manufacturing machine, which, when fully upgraded, can even create uh, very rare Pokeballs, such as Beast Balls, um, all the Aper Balls, and even Master Balls. Even Master Balls? Interesting. Yep. <laughs> That's the, uh, the main draw that is, if you don't mind, Zero. Of course. The main draw of it is most of these upgrades come at a few hundred points each, and most of the quests give you 10, 20 points, maybe 30 oh, for leading them. <sighs> Every 3,000 points that you collect, 
you can upgrade one of the terrariums to have more Pokemon station there. Specifically, half a dozen starters from previous generations are put into each area. Mm-hmm. You can so, get every starter. All of them. And once they're spawned in, outbreaks can spawn in so you can shiny hunt the starters. Um, I got three shiny Poplio from this just the other day. Dagnabbit, I want shiny Poplio. I can give you one. <laughs> that is I, true. I, I, that is absolutely I, a thing. I have uh -huh. three. I can trade you one. I'll trade you one. I have a few shinies of my own. Do, would you like a shiny Comparaja or a shiny Fluttermane? Hell yeah, I'll take a shiny Fluttermane. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, regarding the points, uh, as you do more points, you actually get access to uh, missions that do more to the point where uh, I get 30 to 40 points per mission. And these missions are things like pick up 10 items off the ground. Um, travel 500 yards. Uh, travel 500 yards. Auto battle 10 Pokemon, which they now have the synchro system uh, in which you can take control of a Pokemon and use them to auto battle um, and get to like use all their animations and move about the world as that Pokemon. Uh, this is really fun with Cerul Edge, which has an extremely fast running animation. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Have they added the Ultra Beast into this game yet? They have not. Darn it. I would love... <laughs> I would love to play as a nice running Zerka tree. Have you seen its running animation? I have. That sounds hilarious. Uh, <laughs> it's like but, it's like a schoolgirl skipping through the meadow, its arms <laughs> laid out to the sides and just prancing forward. <laughs> so, the way you get points quickly is every ten quests you do, you get um, sort of a, a solo quest, a red quest. Or if you complete that, you get like 150 points or so. Yeah. But the ba the, the main way you get points is if you group up with friends in an online lobby, uh, you all can do... All of your quests show up at once. Everybody has three quests at a time. So all of a, so with four people, you have 12 quests. Anytime somebody completes one of those quests, everybody gets the same points. You all share points. That is incredibly helpful. Um. So... With three players playing in the same lobby, uh, you get solo quests, you complete three of the red quests, you get group quests, which then give you like five, six hundred, seven hundred points at once. And within a couple of hours playing with friends, I had pretty much a, 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 a more than a couple of hours, but playing with friends for over the course of like a couple of days, I got all the biomes maxed out, no problem. So... Now that's like 12,000 points. So really uh, encourages you to play online with friends if you want to get everything. Mm. Now, if only I had thought of that before I maxed out all the gems. <laughs> Wait, you did it solo? Yes. Oh my goodness. Patient. Y yes. <laughs> yes, yep. you are patient. Tell you what, next time you want to play, hit me up. We'll play together, okay? Sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Look, well, why well, work smart when you can work incredibly hard? Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's got to be a faster way than just grinding this out myself. And I was like, oh, group quests. They give you almost like, you, you can get like hundreds upon hundreds of points off these things. No problem. Oh, okay. So that is intentional then. That's it's yes. supposed to work like that. You're so you get you can get a good amount of points by yourself, but with friends you get access to way, way more points. And all the points are shared. So basically as people are running around catching Pokemon, just playing the game normally, you're all getting points together. You're all running around in the same world anyway. Hmm. So okay. yeah. Uh <laughs> Casey, you want to talk about Final Fantasy? Casey? Casey? We, we are so going to just completely, like, 
these two are just gonna tune us out for like three hours. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, okay. Yes, my apologies in advance. Hmm. It's okay. Me and Patient went on about Pokemon. We can we can go into Final Fantasy. Okay, so I'm on break, which means I was doing whatever the fuck I wanted for a week. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. start with uh, yeah. Uh, I played the new Ratchet and Clank game, the new one from two years ago. I mean, uh, that's a fun game. Probably rank it in the bottom half of Ratchet and Clank games, to be perfectly honest. But only like just barely, like five out of eight. Um, <clears throat> it's still pretty good, then. Yeah, like in my opinion, that hasn't been a bad one, really. But you know, it's it's on the I... lower end of what those games can be. I enjoyed that game quite a bit. You know, it was just fun. Yeah, I, I I just could easily name four games I had more fun with. Uh, <laughs> of course. Um, but yeah, that that was fun. I got about halfway through the challenges uh, challenge mode, um, which is mm, uh, <laughs> it's very slow leveling up weapons in that game uh, for very little benefit. Like they aren't as fun as they usually are. Mm -hmm. they they usually get a bit wacky with the weapons in Ratchet and Clank and in this one they just kind of there's a bomb and it will do cluster bombs and there's a gun and it shoots does it shoot anything fancy? Uh, it shoots and if you upgrade it to max then it shoots in a little spread pattern three bullets Horizontally. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Not exactly on the level of wackiness of the sheepinator that you just shoot at an enemy and they gradually turn into a sheep. That is and pretty are, wacky and fun. And, and are thus okay. harmless, yeah. Okay, I like the sound of that. <laughs> Even without any context. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. There's not really anything like there's there's one you get in New Game Plus that is the pixelizer, which you shoot them with it and they become pixelated and that that's it. It doesn't actually seem to do anything else, it just does that and does a bit of damage. Also, that's a gun from a previous game, so it doesn't really count for this one either. Like, oh. that is probably the most interesting and wacky weapon in the game. It's from a previous game. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, not. I'm a little underwhelmed on that. The story was fun though. I I like the new characters. It was cool. Um, but yeah. Does does the rest of the game kind of reek of we didn't have the budget or the time to do wacky? We kind of had to pump something out. I wouldn't put it that way. If I mean, this is an Insomniac game, and guess what else Insomniac has been working on for the past like eight years they're called the spider-man games so oh, yeah, this sorry. feels very much like hey we have some extra staff so let's have them work on a side project for a while that we have the license for and just you know let th let them do their own thing so they're not just wasting their time which you know fair enough yeah and it did come out with a good game like i will i will say that again bottom half of ratchet and clank games but there are some fucking great ratchet and clank games mm -hmm. so you know it's I, I remember when i played it like on on the ps5 it was like just visually super just stunning yeah like, incredibly like they, they really got a lot out of the the art style that they use and the power of the uh console to really create something that looks really really good yeah it's very pretty uh yeah well that's pretty much all i got to say about that Final Fantasy XIV, this is how I spent pretty much every hour of every day of my week <laughs> off. <laughs> that is not an exaggeration. Uh, I woke up, maybe watched a YouTube video while I ate breakfast, and then I booted up Final Fantasy XIV. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I might have gotten into that game finally, it only took me three tries. Uh... <laughs> I'm glad you didn't bounce off this time. That's nice. Sorry, what'd you say, Zero? I said, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So. I think it also took me three times to get into it. Yeah. A Realm Reborn, which is the base game, uh, it has problems. It has pacing problems. And I say that knowing full well I am playing the trimmed down version of A Realm Reborn. <laughs> they have cut chopped out a it up. <laughs> bunch of the main quests that didn't really matter. Fun fact there is still a bunch of the main quest that doesn't really matter. <laughs> hmm. I know that um, from my friends who have been playing for a very, very long time, um, there was a whole quest regarding um, a winery there that is. went on for a very, very, very long time. There are two points. So far, I'm at level 41, so, you know, I'm towards the back half. Um, there are two points in the game where the pacing grinds to a fucking halt. The first one mm-hmm. was in uh, Bent Branch in Gridania, where basically you're just fucking about doing busy work for some chocobo keepers for no reason uh there is one thing where you're kind of chasing down a dude who is mysterious and then the rest of it is just fucking around helping chocobo keepers for no reason Mm -hmm. and then the other is the fucking company of heroes oh my fucking god it is the worst quest line i have ever oh boy it is like five hours of my life i will never get back so Let me posit the scenario for you, gentlemen. There are these basically avatars of deities. They are called primals. And what basically happens is people are having a really shitty time. So they're like, hey, God, help a brother out. And God's like, bet, I got you. And he comes down and he fucks everyone up. (laughs) Oh, okay. Uh, so one of these primals is, uh, summoned by some kobold dudes because they're having a really shitty time, uh, thanks to the, uh, nearby city that kind of just says, yeah, we fucked with them. What are you going to do about it? We kind of have big problems right now, which is a dick thing to do, but okay. Uh, (laughs) starting some shit and being like, oh no, I started some shit. Um, (laughs) but, uh, yeah. You are sent to go and deal with the avatar of a deity. Which, you know, by this point you've done that twice, so that's fine. Uh, And they're like, okay, we need to come up with a plan to deal with this avatar of a deity. There were these dudes, like, five years ago that dealt with this avatar before. So let's go ask them for help and advice in how to deal with it. So, you go to where one of your buddies says there is one of these dudes, and you do some busy work for him, he's kind of a prick, and then after about like five quests for this dude, it turns out he's a complete fraud, uh, and all of that time he just spent is pointless. That sucks. Yeah, that's not great. But, you do get the location of the real dude that you need to talk to. So you go to him. And he's like, yeah, no, I don't really feel like it. uh, And I don't think you're up to it. Guy who has killed two avatars of deities already. So I need you to prove yourself for me. My boss is having a really nice dinner. I want you to go get the ingredients for dinner. Okay. So... You go around three different countries hunting down ingredients for dinner. And it's kind of pitched as like tests from these dudes who are super hardcore, but they're not. Uh, You do a bunch of bullshit. Some of it makes sense. Like one of them is hunting down a really rare and dangerous creature for its meat. Okay, that... Feels kind of adjacent to testing your worth, I guess. Uh, So you do a couple of those. 
Then it's time to get some cheese. There's this goblin dude. He is good with cheese. Um, he's like, hey, go fight this dragon for me. <laughs> Not even like a legendary cow. No, this this it's it's just hey, there is a dungeon that there's some other goblin dudes in it. Um, go find a dragon, and I'll give you some cheese. Okay. That's a weird... That could be any item. Why have cheese as the MacGuffin? I don't know, but it gets worse. So you get the cheese. <clears throat> and you come back to the dude. And he's like, okay, cool. Um, that's pretty much all I had. But um, there is one more thing. I actually need you to get some wine. This probably sounds like a big test or something. But no, I actually really do need you to get this wine. Because it's like we're coming up to the deadline, you know. <laughs> I got a job to do. So uh, if you could just get the wine, that'd be great. So you go to the guy who's supposed to have the wine. He doesn't have the wine. He sends you to go to another guy who maybe has the wine. He doesn't have the wine. Okay. He sends you to just literally ask everyone in the vineyard whether they have the wine. Nobody has the wine. He sends you to this weird hermit dude that lives in the woods to ask him if he has the wine. He doesn't have the wine. Mm. Uh, <laughs> this goes on for like six or seven more quests. <laughs> Of just fucking around trying to find this stupid fucking wine. <laughs> it used to be much worse. <laughs> uh. um, the Company of Heroes is a very notorious low point in ARR. It is the biggest hump that people have to get through to actually get into the game. <sighs> You know, I didn't really like Alpha No. I'm going to say that much. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the voice change, by the way. Because, like, yes. I love Talos and Jaffe. I love Sam Regal. They're great dudes. Not exactly giving the right game here. And I feel like they don't quite fit the characters. Exactly. But Alpha No is a smug, self important prick. Yes. But the moment he became important to the actual plot, and I have to deal with him a lot, he started talking shit about the Company of Heroes, and I'm like, okay, Alpha, no, you're okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm all right with you. Maybe I judge too harshly. <laughs> <clears throat> like, literally one of the first things he says after you're done with all of that bullshit is, uh, yeah, I, while you were fucking around with the Company of Buffoons, I was actually doing important stuff recently. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that whole thing was completely pointless. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with that. I have been doing crafty shit. I've been doing gathery shit. I've been leveling classes. Bard, I, I, I don't fuck with Bard. It's not very good. Uh, Ninja it, is surprisingly fun. Oh, it is very fun. The, um, the ninjas themselves are lame as shit. I hate them. Yeah, but me too. <laughs> but the class is fun. I'm a ninja main. I don't. I don't like the quest line. Uh, yeah, but uh, that's that's been cool. I am now. Uh, I have to gear up for level forty because I'm getting my ass kicked at this point. Uh, and I've found out, unfortunately, that. There is, like, a hunting thing where you've got to kill certain monsters for your grand company. Yeah. Uh, to rank up. And I have to do a level 20 dungeon, and I'm, like, level 40. <laughs> and it has to be multiplayer. <laughs> so... Like, kind of sucks. Yeah. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the etiquette for that sort of thing is. And do I, mm. I, can, I, I, can, I can tell you. It's pretty simple. Uh, when you queue up, uh, if you're playing it, uh, are you playing a DPS like a ninja, for example, right? Uh, I am. I did level up a, uh, the precursor to Paladin. I forget what it's called. Gladiator. That's it. Uh, I did okay. level one of those up for the sake of maybe getting an easier queue. All right. Um, <clears throat> for a DPS, uh, I mean, the only thing you have to do is once you enter, you just do O slash 
you know, a little greeting. That's it. That's just being polite. No, don't even have to say hi. Some people just say hi or hey. Or just have a macro that's just like O slash, like a little wave. And uh, stick with the party. Uh, don't I, I run meant ahead. just for like forcing people to do like a level 20 dungeon that no one wants to do. <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing. You queue up for that dungeon, you're going to get up, get into it anyways, because people do uh, their daily roulettes, which do randomized dungeons. Uh, and they get lots of experience and money and stuff for it to compensate for the fact that it's lower level anyways. Oh, right. But people, right. as people do their dailies, all you have to do is queue up for the, the dungeon you want to do, and you'll eventually get people, uh, probably a lot of people who are, um, have already run it several times. They know what they're doing. <clears throat> like, they run it, I say several, pro probably several thousand um if they if you see another sprout with you i'd be a little bit more new but yeah it, like it's it's that easy it's really painless the only <laughs> thing is just you know oh slash at the beginning say hi and then thank you for party or t y f p in the chat at the end of the dungeon and comment give somebody a commendation if you liked them and they did a good job is That's that the ff14 equivalent of gg um yeah yeah just so people will put, even do put like GG or thank you for party, just a little like short, you know, polite. Hmm. The, you don't have to really engage with them much more beyond that, and they're going to be much more skilled and much more geared than uh, NPCs that you party with. Tanks are going to pull usually um, all the enemies in an area to the wall until they can't pull anymore, and. Um, DPS's job is to use their spread attacks and Daily. kill as many as possible. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty <clears throat> it's it's pretty fast, simple, and painless. Okay. Yeah. So that that's the thing I'll have to get around to. Um while I'm in the midst of gearing up new stuff, which mm -hmm. I, I really like the crafting. I don't know why it's such simple stuff, but I really enjoy it. Getting the stuff and putting it together. And... There's such complexity to the crafting with how much you, you can craft everything in the game, you know? Mm. Except materia. Yeah, except materia, but um, that's fine. You can... Uh... Speaking People... of, I have so much gathering and fucking uh, crafting materia, and I have basically no combat materia. <laughs> When you get to, um, you can get combat material through a variety of different ways, but for people who are like max level, uh, when they do their daily roulettes, instead of experience, they'll get material that they can then ch exchange for any combat material they want. Oh, cool. Um, so like that's just there and some events will also give you that material as well. Um, but yeah, no, people usually have way more combat materia than they could ever possibly feasibly use because they just run the roulettes. I like that for gathering and crafting at the moment, but yes. <laughs> yeah. So is that just like daily roulettes? Is that just like sort of a incentivized thing for a certain number of things per day or what? Um, when you, you should have access to, on your menu to a something called the duty roulette. With yeah. The, um, and, uh, well, most of it unlocks once you hit level 50. Um, the leveling dungeon gives you... Uh, the leveling roulette gives you so much experience that at, at lower levels, it can give you sometimes multiple levels worth of experience just by doing, like, one dungeon with some, with some randos. Hmm. Um, and at higher levels, um, going through the entirety of the roulette, which is like doing trials, doing alliance raids, doing like rerunning MSQ stuff, um, just gives you all a bunch of experience, gives you a bunch of free gill, uh, uh, like as a bonus. And so people are always just running those just because they want to play the game, you know, or they're just leveling classes or other class, other jobs rather. So hmm. um, it's it's the daily content that everybody engages with and. Everybody's incentivized to do keeps engagement up, so yeah. Fair enough. Cool. And it makes it easier for newer players when they're trying to get into like a, a something that they need to progress, because yeah. there's always going to be for people example, running the content. Yeah. yeah, there's always going to be people running the content that you need to do because there's always people playing and always people doing roulettes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the uh, 
the keynote speech. Mm-hmm. Mm. That was a thing. We had the um, the JP Fan Fest for Final Fantasy fourteen, in which they showed off quite a bunch of new things coming out in the next X pack, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, the the last sort of new um, player race sort of thing, which is. Uh, for a while, they had launched two races, which were the Hrothgar and the Viera. The Hrothgar being these big lion-looking dudes, and the Viera being these very like thin, bunny tall girls. bunny girls, right? And for a while, they were gender locked, um, in that you could only play a female Viera and a male Hrothgar. Uh, the last expansion they added in the male Viera, um, which are twinks, <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the bunny a, yeah, boy twinks. Yeah, and then um, now they're adding the the lionesses, the female Hrothgar, uh, with the next X pack, and so they showed those off. And they know what they're doing with that. The emotes that they had those uh, lion ladies doing, they they know what their that their audience is. I have a friend who's been wanting to play a female Hrothgar for literal years, who was going feral at the news, and is still going feral right now. This is Dawn? This is uh, Shay. Oh, okay. Dawn is going uh, feral over the Pictomancer. Mm, mm -hmm. Because mm. she's an artist, mm -hmm. and she gets to play as a new job, which is a casting job, her favorite job, mm. and as an artist who basically draws things to life. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm 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 still on team uh Viper for classes. Yeah, like same here. I'm I vi viping every day. It I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. And, and <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly honest, in an ideal world I think uh Viper would have been the follow up to Rogue. Yes, I hundred percent agree. I have been playing Ninja for years. I have been wanting a follow-up to Rogue for years and been complaining about it for years. And then they added Viper and I went feral over it because yeah. this is everything that I wanted that Ninja did not give me. Yeah, it, 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 but that is, you know, benefit of hindsight and all that stuff, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But it would be really cool if Jack just shows up and he's like, yeah, I, I've been training in the fucking mountains for like... 10 years what's up <laughs> let me show you bring, some new shit <laughs> bring back the old thieves guild mm. uh, I I, i'd be the old that. rogues yeah i would too um like a little fucking underfoot tiny little <laughs> lalafell with this gigantic twin blade like fuck yeah dude yeah it's yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I'm I'm very excited about everything they they showed off. They're having the the big graphical update as well, um, which is going to change the PC requirements. And I'm going to end up buying a new PC anyways because my one's really it's, outdated. It's not going to be like you're not you. If you've got a PC that can run things that came out in the last eight years, you can probably still run it fine. It's not yeah, I think I'll be fine. It's just I I have problems with my current computer anyway, so oh, I'll be. Sense upgrading before then yeah. um also cyberpunk and space yep <laughs> space exploration <laughs> colonizing and 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 terraforming planets is a thing they're adding in this final fantasy as well as, and... <laughs> uh... <laughs> See, Isn't here's that the thing. Final Frontier, not Final Fantasy. Here's the thing. They established. Um, you probably don't. I don't know how much you know about this, but. Moon. Um, yes. Ed Walker establishes at least travel to the moon and, and space travel as a whole, actually, uh, starts to get explored in Ed Walker, the latest X Pack. And. I won't say more than that because spoilers, but. Yeah, no, they're building on that. They're going even further beyond. To infinity and beyond, one might say. Yeah, you might. 
as well as an entire cyberpunk-looking area. I don't know if that's going to be the city, st- the city state in the newer place. It it is um, one of them, yes. Uh, there, there, there is the tropical sort of Aztec E-ish type thing that is, uh, I think it's Tulyolal. I think it's what it's mm-hmm. called. Uh, and then the other one that they have mentioned is going to be a player hub is the the cyberpunk city. Oh, that's good. I okay. don't know I whether that means that. they're going to have housing there. I hope. <laughs> so, so the way it typically works is um, the uh, the city state player housing usually comes like a couple X packs later. Mm. Um, like say for example, so far in terms of player housing, the furthest we have is the um kogane uh housing the yeah. japanese the themed place housing from yeah. from stormblood right um and adding how and they recently added housing for i say recently it's not that recently but uh to um ishgard which is a heavensward location which people yeah. have been asking for for years um with the entire that being a whole event of rebuilding um parts of Ishgard that had been damaged in the war that it was engaged in. And, and mm. like, that was a whole thing where players had a whole big crafty competition. Time. Yeah. Big crafty time, crafty gather time and a whole competition and everything. Mm. Um, so eventually, eventually we could get cyberpunk housing. Mm. I hope that would be, that'd be super hype. The fucking aesthetic for this game is gonna change wildly after this expansion comes out. It's already very, very um, expansive in terms of the available aesthetic. Yeah, uh, but like we're, we're gonna have fucking leathers and chaps and shit, and then we're gonna have fucking cyberpunk fucking tech goggles and you know. Neon armor and shit going on. Well, I guess that also already, is already have a thing. That yeah, stuff. that's already a thing. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen the 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 PvP late elegant armor? No. All right, I'm gonna post this so you can see this. This is literally like they already have like mecha themed attire in the game, thanks to the ancient Algon Empire. Yeah, that's basically from Mass Effect. <laughs> Like they that stuff's already in there. If you want to be a cyborg ninja, they already have an outfit for it. In fact, yeah, that's basically Kai Lang. <laughs> <laughs> so I know people who uh, get really into that. Like, I recommend I recommend um, that you you don't have to do any PvP, but at least go to the Wolves Den, which is the PvP hub, as it were. And uh, you yeah. can go and look at the uh, PvP armor and weapons that you can get for there and uh, try them on your character. And, like, they're really good. Yeah, I, I I did go there, and the second I landed in the Wolves' Den, all of my abilities turned to a bunch of bullshit I have never seen before. And I'm like, mm, I'm So good. the the <laughs> way that works um, is your abilities as a PvP unit are entirely changed uh well not entirely but they are they are very modified and, and new compared to how that you are as a uh player so you have to go to your pvp uh menu and add in the actions on your hotbar so for example like you have like a three button combo that you usually do when you're playing your class of like hit this combos yep. into this combos into that that's on one button now that you just repeatedly press oh okay and uh, you have other buttons, like a button that you use for your healing items, so you can heal once you can get out of battle, and uh, your abilities can be a bit different. And you can use your uh, lim- limit break um, in PvP. Uh, like, say, for example, Ninja's PvP limit break is called uh, Death Link. Whenever an enemy's HP drops below 50%, you can limit break to instantly kill them. And... Then you have a short amount of time in which you can link that death, gra- search for another enemy with HP below 50%, and then instantly kill them again. And each time you do that, the time between uh, how long you have to find another enemy that you can kill uh, gets shorter and shorter. But, you know, that's 
an entirely different sort of ability set as you're meant to kind of weave in and out of combat and like be an opportunist and just pick people off. Mm. You know, like tanks who just refuse to die otherwise. Okay. <laughs> it's really fun. I like PvP. We'll we'll see if I get into PvP. It's probably not, let's be perfectly honest, but you know. Uh... The best part about PvP is you get rewarded whether you win or lose. So you can just kind of go in and talk about it and nobody cares. Okay. Um yeah, I I, th I think that covers Final Fantasy, gentlemen. You can you can tune back in now. Sorry, I listened the whole time. Just didn't know what I was hearing. Nothing at all to apologize for. It's nice to see you rather passionate about something and having fun with something. Or... It it remains. Final Fantasy is the thing I'm playing. Baldur's Gate three is out. Everyone is raving about how great it is. Baldur's Gate. The thing I didn't shut up about for like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm playing Final Fantasy. Well, <laughs> the you thing still I hated have... my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's good. It's good fun. Um, I am excited for you to make your way through A Realm Reborn and get to that the voice actor switch because uh, does that happen like right after a realm reborn once a realm reborn is over and you and you you start to hit evan's word boom it's instant oh good okay um and all of a sudden i i like alphano a lot more <laughs> mm. I, I, yeah I, I assume he starts sounding like the kid he is yes rather than a middle-aged man Yes, <laughs> he start. Everybody starts sounding appropriate, and it fits so much better for the majority of the cast. There's some where it's a little bit more debatable, but for everybody you're gonna be interacting with, it's fine. Um, yeah, like uh, a a lot of the performances are fine. One of them really stands out as what the fuck were they doing, and that's. Uh, I don't want to talk too much shit, but Minfilia, it might be a directing issue, it might be an acting issue, I honestly don't know and couldn't tell you, but oh my god how she likes to enunciate every single syllable of her words and not especially emote on any of them beyond what I am doing right now. Sounds hmm. terrible. Yeah. Minfilia is, um, it's one of those cases where I don't like Minfilia. I don't like Minfilia at all. Hasn't and a big exactly part that... in, uh, endeared herself to me either. No. A, a big part of that reason why people, why some people really, really like Minfilia is because they know of the story before Realm Reborn, when it was the original 14, mm. like 1.0, because she was a major part of that. She was a main character, like a big part of that story. But we don't get to see most of that because we were playing a Realm Reborn. Yeah, well, she's a desk jockey. Yeah. So so we don't have that already established. We know who this character is. We care about them sort of thing. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the, the different voice <laughs> actors really do help a lot. And you are right, by the way, uh, mentioning O Alphano being kind of a kind of a smug piece of shit <laughs> he's yeah. kind of uh hiring his own farts uh yeah i i think that is intentional in fact that is very much intentional yeah that is very much intentional um and it's very much meant to be part of a larger arc for yeah. him yeah he, he very much comes off as the kid who thinks he knows how the world works and when he when the world doesn't work the way that he thinks it does well you know he he gets better mm. <laughs> He becomes uh, one of the most beloved characters in the series. So yeah. Um, so as I said about ten minutes ago, when I said we can stop talking, <laughs> sorry, about sorry. I just, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about with this thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, Slice, how you doing? How's it going? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, well, as I'm sure you've probably heard, I'm congested as shit. Oh, yeah. I've had a cough for like a week and a half now. No fever, just. As occasional sore throats and coughing and stuff, so 
Hmm. Hasn't been amazing, but it's not the worst. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Hunt Showdown, as I have the last couple weeks, so I can definitely relate to all of my free time going into a single game. So, uh, yeah. Um, I don't actually know if I've done much else. Um, just been chatting with people, hanging out. Um, I made some minis. I bought the Christmas box, they call it, for Warhammer, which is two big tanks and a 20-man squad of uh, infantry. So that was fun. Hmm. And that's that's really about it. I mean, my week was real short. I mean, it's been longer than a week, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's that's been about the last couple weeks, really. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, we had a, a, a part shortage at work in that we need power supplies and they're like we don't know when these are going to get here uh so our entire department basically shut down mm. uh and i'm a contract worker so they're with the, who they were you know, like trying really hard to hire and trying to fast track that process and suddenly it's full it went from full steam ahead to slam on the brakes of the hiring process so mm. the full-time job position was rescinded temporarily which sucks, but that's what happens when managers and corpo people uh, panic. Mm. Yeah, they they don't want to put you in a position where they have to pay you even though you're not working. Pretty much. I mean, I've I've been assured they'll find a place for me. Like they'll just send me off to another department if they have to. But like, still, I assume full-time employees are more expensive, even though they pay contractors usually several dollars an hour more. Uh, I assume the benefits and such are more expensive for them. Yeah, the benefits and the guaranteed pay, regardless of what happens. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, trying, to, trying to think of anything else I've done. I bought a lot of games on Steam that I haven't played yet. Uh, I anyway. intended. I intended to buy um, uh, the definitive edition or whatever it's called of Fallout 4, just so I had all the DLC so mods would work. Hmm. Um, and then I forgot to buy it and bought a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> so, you know, it happens. Does it? <laughs> yes. It's, it happens when you wishlist everything else and forget to wishlist that one. Hmm. And then you get lazy with it. Okay. Oh, it'll it'll be on sale again soon. Oh yeah, it's on sale constantly. I uh, I did buy Fallout seventy six for four dollars. Mm. Uh, played it for twenty minutes and didn't like it. So I can definitively say I don't like that game now. Instead of just assuming. Yeah. <clears throat> so mm. yeah, I I'm kind of baffled at how like. A lot of games don't hold your hand, obviously, but that one doesn't at all. It's like you leave the vault, and it's like you don't even really have a quest. Go out yeah. and do stuff is basically the idea, I think. Start exploring in a world that will mostly kill you because you're level 1 or 20 if you start with the advanced character class. Uh, and uh, most of the world is leveled above you. Yeah, that's that's kind of the feel they were going for, I think. Which yeah. is interesting, because like Bethesda have so consistently been one of the forerunners for uh, the world levels with you. Like, you mm -hmm. will never face a challenge you cannot overcome, because everything is always going to be about your level. Which so is it, it, it's good. weird to hear that they're just sort of shifting away from that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, New Vegas kind of slipped away from that. There's definitely a recommended well, New Vegas app, was Obsidian. but yeah, I know. Uh, but uh, they still kind of kept that path pathos, even though even though there is a suggested path and things are incredibly difficult, you can still do it. But uh, yeah, when things are triple your level and you do one damage anytime you shoot them, it, it's not possible. So, yeah, that, that was my limited experience with 76. Mm. Mm. Patient, how, how, you, how you going? 
You with us? I'm just right. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, the past three weeks have been interesting. Uh, overall, not a ton of things have changed, but there have been some interesting developments. My, my younger sister, the last of my siblings still living at home, has found an apartment, and she'll be moving out uh, this, uh, this coming week. Hmm. I... Uh, did we did some rearranging this past uh, this past week? Well, not rearranging. My mother was looking around for play people that might have been selling secondhand furniture to see if she could get my sister a new uh, some new stuff, and she got a nice she got a nice queen sized bed for her. A couple oh, of sets of springs, a mattress, a bed frame. Also a nice sectional couch. And uh, all of that ran about $500, which, I mean, for that kind of furniture, that's a really Cheap. good deal. Yeah. yeah, that's nuts. Mm -hmm. And something else that happened. When my mother brought this up with me one night when I was over dog-sitting... Uh, she mentioned that the same person who was selling the bed was also selling a chair. Do you need a chair? Or... A very, and very nice chair that is now in the possession of yours truly, as my sister did not want it. And I got it at a most reasonable price. Free. Hell yeah. Oh, okay, cool. The best price. I see mm. we just wanted to get rid of it. Yeah. Most likely moving out, and I mean it's a bit weathered, but it is very big, very solid, and very much something that I have been longing to have in my room for the past several weeks. So that's very nice. Ooh, I'm as someone who's sense. sitting in a recliner in his room, yeah, it's fucking great. <laughs> well, it's not a recliner, but oh. still very nice. Yeah. If anything, I kind of like how it's just stable as it is. And not just because a recliner would... Uh... Eh, uh, never mind that. Uh, uh, other occurrences these past couple of weeks... Uh... I posted the latest chapter of Do Duelist's Dream of Electric Karibo. Uh, that I'm helping Maximus Max write on Space Battles. Uh, Chumley and Cyrus versus the Paradox Brothers is the latest chapter. For anyone who's familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, that is. I know the first two characters. I think I saw like ten episodes. Yeah. Years mm -hmm. ago. Fair enough. I mean, in canon, it was main protagonist Jaden alongside Cyrus. Here, it's Jaden's two tag-along sidekicks. <laughs> Up against a couple of professional duelists who once worked under Pegasus and fought against Yugi and Joey together. So, it, it was a good chapter. And we're working on something interesting for the next one as well mm, nice yeah uh, other developments let's see uh, as i alluded to earlier i've been playing indigo disc and at this point i've almost completed the pokedex for blueberry academy yeah, at this point, it's just evolving all of the starters I've come across, and then, uh, then evolving uh, Dripplin into a high Drapple. So, and then of course finishing it to get Terrapagos. So we'll see how that goes. Hmm. I've been varying between games a little bit the past 
past few weeks I've been trying a bit more to get writing done. And... I mean, part of that was to make sure that we could release the latest chapter of Electric Haribo um, when we did. So that was good. Uh, so it, it came out. It came out nicely. And I'm getting a lot of writing related stuff done now. It's helpful. Mm. Past few days, I've been paying somewhat attention to a poketuber named uh, Dylan with the with the channels United Gamer and United Plays. He started a subathon where every member, every new member to his channel during the stream extends how long the stream is going to go for. Mm -hmm. It's been going on for a week now and the timer still has about 10 days left on it at this point. Yeah, it'll happen. You set it too high. It's yeah. it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. He did. He does have a cutoff that he won't keep going if it goes a month, and he's taking Sundays off to spend time with his wife and daughter. So yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Though he is apparently streaming his chair the whole time. Not his. Not his idea. His depraved audience was demanding the chair. Oh, I, 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 right. I, I'm sure it's just a joke that's going way too far. But yeah. what? I mean, it's keeping in the spirit of things, I guess. Like if he, the subathon is never ending, even if he's no. not there. So I mean, as we discussed previously, there's nothing wrong with appreciating a nice chair. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a good old chair. Right, I suppose that's me unable to protest. Mm. But, yeah, aside from all of those things and a nice Christmas time, New Year's coming to pass, not a whole lot to touch on. Just still going on, still trying to find another job, and still not quite managing. Mm -hmm. so, Sorry to hear that. It's not your fault, as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> Little do you know, I was secretly calling up all the places you applied to. <laughs> <laughs> no. I have been. I will admit, I've been paranoid that someone has been doing that. No, this... previous positions. Mm. I highly doubt that. Yeah, yeah it can so feel like that when you go from one industry to the next, or just keep in the same industry. They can feel yeah. like that. I should hope not. Yeah. Oh, and also, I learned about this today. This farmer couple used silicon to create molds in the shape of their own feet. They then planted turnips using these molds. As the turnips grew, they filled the molds and took on the shape of their feet. They say feet. What they actually mean is legs. Yeah, no, those are legs. Yeah, what? Those are turnip legs. Impressive. <sighs> Well, you know, they're living their best farmer life. Look, times are tough. You got to make money somehow. Okay, you know, there are probably people who would spend a lot of money. <laughs> yes. A lot of money. <laughs> yes. A lot of money on this technology. Not on the technology, just the fucking turnips. On the turnips? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> um uh okay thank you patient yeah hmm. i mean patient brought this up but i'm gonna i'm gonna spare him the fucking next comment that i was thinking of saying uh <laughs> yeah um yeah that's i think that's that's a good that's a good capstone on the podcast i think uh so uh is it zero it's, yeah, uh, it's it's a patron. Yeah, we have a patron. Yeah. Uh, 
is very nice. I uh, I do want to mention as I bring this up, uh, I did go on a brief vacation outside of my home to a place called Lake Tahoe, which is nearby. Oh. Up in the mountains. And I got to play in the snow. Yeah, it's still. That's fun. That does sound nice. And uh, my parents decided to go gambling. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. I lost 40 bucks. I lost 40 bucks. I stopped myself. Uh, My dad won like 800 bucks. Did super, super well. He got a royal flush in uh, video poker. What? Damn. For those who don't know, Royal Flush is the rarest hand in poker. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it was actually a thousand bucks, but uh, they had already spent some of it. So. Oh, okay. I was my next question. Was, away, how much walked, money did he spend to get that yeah. eight hundred? Uh, but walked away uh, about eight hundred bucks, Richard. I mean, respect for walking away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, at that point, if you hit that. You just stop because it literally, literally cannot get better than that. <laughs> agreed, agreed. Yeah, no, uh, it was very, very awesome. Uh, he'd been on a losing streak for, we were only there for like two nights. He'd been on a losing streak the entire previous day. And so, you know, my, my mom hit a, a jackpot and got like 500 bucks and then they gave some of that back and played off that money and then he turned it into a thousand off the what, what they had, had left so it was a net profit <laughs> mm, nice. that is good sorry about your loss though <laughs> they're very lucky I lost 40 bucks <laughs> it's my fault on my first on my on my second spin I won like I turned 20 bucks into 60 bucks and I should have stopped I should have mm. stopped yeah but I didn't should have learned from your dad yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, his dad didn't stop though. <laughs> no, that's, that's not. Yeah, he just kept going till he won. Yeah, that's the lesson to take away from this. If you're losing, just keep going. It'll turn around eventually. <laughs> be fine. Uh, yeah, no. It was, it was it was really nice there. I had a the, we had like a really nice lunch. I had like a <clears throat> shrimp penne with some. Like light sauce, super super good, super fresh. Um, so as for our patrons, hmm. thank you to everybody who's been supporting us on Patreon. Love you all very very much. Thank you to the following patrons who uh, supported us through the previous month of December. Yeah, yeah. sorry about the break. Thank- it's the holidays. That's how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you to uh, James MacArthur, uh, Ryu Hitsia Twenty One, Sailor of House Thunderbird, Vale, Greek Guy, Ethan F, The Crossbrain, and Chopper Thirty Seven for your support. Yeah, really appreciate it. Thanks, yeah. guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I stayed up till five a.m. one night playing Needy Streamer Overload. It's a fun game. There's a billion endings. I got all of them. Shit! What? <laughs> <laughs> I got all. Wow, I can see why you were up all night then. Hmm. I, it it really drew me in, and I got the true ending, and I was shook. Can we can we spoil that? Because I actually didn't get that ending, and I don't think I have the energy to just keep playing that game. I'm curious. Right. We're this. at the very end of the podcast anyway, so is it okay if I talk about Swallows for Needy, needy Streamer Overload? Uh. If people don't want to hear about this, like I'm, I, I don't care. So I'm, I'm gonna stick around. But if anyone doesn't want to hear about this, then they can bounce now and no, stop podcast, stop all the download. Um, uh, Discord link in the description, Patreon link in the description. Okay, you can uh, go, zero, go for it. Okay. So <clears throat> need a streamer, streamer overload. Um, the 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 window that you play in is like a PC desktop with a webcam and everything and you can see the the streamer girl when she's you know offline and she has her whole costume and thing and you basically are are you she calls you P-chan as the uh almost like a producer uh you, your character you're, you're playing as her boyfriend apparently and I think, I think it is a reference to uh love life yeah it's it's a reference to that yes 
And you go through um, managing every activity she does over the course of 30 days as you try to get her to um, essentially get her channel to blow up really big through like managing activities, like ideas for streams, um, deleting uh, mean or offensive comments during the streams as they go through, and so on and so forth, while also managing a few <clears throat> meters like um, uh, affection, for example. And if her affection goes too high or too low, it's a game over. It's an ending. Uh, mental darkness, which is basically just her depression, um, which can be affected by, say, taking meds or going to the hospital. Um, and then, uh, and so on and so forth, right? And when you get all of the other endings, <clears throat> you get the true ending. Um, in which the... You get a message from her, and she says, "Actually, I don't need you, P. Chan. I can do it all myself." And it's it starts going rapid fire through the various days, and her uh, subscribers are going up, 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 up. Her followers are going up, up, up. As it's just rapidly, she's doing it all herself. And then, all right, yeah, I could do it all on my own. And then she leaves, and you're left on that desktop. And you can finally access this file, this secrets.txt file that you couldn't previously access before because her webcam would move to block it every time you tried to click on it. Yeah, that was the... I assumed that was related. So, um, she talks about how this time Speed Chan was just too nice and she can't really handle that, so maybe next time Speed Chan will be better. Um, essentially, the implication is that uh, there is no Speed Chan. It has been essentially an imaginary friend. You've not been playing as her boyfriend. You've been playing as her. That's why you're looking at her desktop the entire time. Why, um, when you look at, she's tweeting things on her private account. Nobody ever likes that because it's only her that's ever seeing it. It's only ever been her and her delusions. It's why you get a bad ending when the affection goes too high because she falls in love with this imaginary figure too much. It's not real. Damn. That's cool. Yep. Mm. So, essentially, uh, the, the, the <laughs> even like there's a, like a have sex option, right? And it goes, she goes off camera and there's like hearts coming off from the side of the screen. There's nobody there. It's just her. Mm. You know, like she, she's just delusional and she's been using this peach and to help guide her and, and try to help her manage her stress and her uh, anxiety when it comes to going and being a streamer. Because she's very lonely. That would explain a lot of things. I kind of suspected that was the reveal. Was You're not a person. But, eh, good to know. Yeah. It's, it's a very fun her. game, honestly. Even, even though we spoiled it. Like If you're at all interested in it, it check it out. It's very fun. Yeah. It, it really causes you to to think like the the text she's having when she's having like darker depressive episodes and you're answering back she's texting herself and trying to answer her own dark thoughts with encouragement or or even more negativity that's why a lot of the text options that you get back are kind of mean a lot of the time mm -hmm. because she's mean to herself she has depression it's really excellently well done and, and, and implemented. And uh, looking back on a lot of the game is enhanced by by knowing that extra bit of information. It, it, it affects how you see things. Mm. <clears throat> really good game. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Probably should have opened with that rather than closing with it and saying, hey, really recommend this game. It's really good. And then go into all the spoilers. <laughs> so people could be like, oh, okay, I'll give it a try. Whoops. I suppose that's fair. Mm. Yeah, probably. Too late now. Yeah, well. I mean, like you say, it's uh, almost... Be hmm. This might be one of those occasions where knowing the twist in advance only makes it better. Yeah. Hmm. It, I would say it enhances the experience because then you can see it from those uh, from multiple angles rather than like only having to look back at it, back at it in retrospect. Mm. I don't know. It'd, it'd be a different experience. I don't. 
I don't know whether it would be better. And that's one of those things where it's very subjective. You wouldn't actually be able to know. Yeah. Because if you played it not knowing the twist, you don't know what it's like playing it already knowing the twist for the first time. <clears throat> so, who knows? Uh, the the whole Peach Hen mate name makes a lot of sense because she's just ripping off um, Love Live for her imaginary friend. And so it's an in-universe reference instead of a, uh, you know, a d assumedly developer-based one. No, she, she, it, <laughs> she's literally a weeb, so, yeah. Uh, that's a podcast. That's a podcast. Hell yeah. Until next time. Until next time. See you guys. <laughs>